This is the original legend of how the money of Okapit Island was discovered. It shouldn't be taken as absolute fact, as many elements of the story have been debated for the past century. In 1795 at age 16, Daniel McGuinness made his way across to Oak Island on a fishing expedition. Once on the island, he found himself stood in a clearing in front of an old oak tree bearing the marks of an unnatural scarring. This he supposed to be caused by a rope and tackle system used to lower material down into a shaft below, indicated by depression beneath the tree about 4.8 meters in diameter. This completed the scene as Daniel immediately recognized it from a childhood tales of pirates. The very next day Daniel returned to Oak Island accompanied by two friends. Equipped with picks and shovels they began the task to recover the treasure, but it was to take much more digging equipment than they first anticipated. As the three boys began to dig, they found the earth still bore marks on its smooth clay sides. Their excitement rose when at a depth of 1.2 meters they hit a layer of flagstones. These were removed only to reveal patched logs at 3 meters, 6 meters and 9 meter intervals. On removing these layers of logs, the boys realized they were going to need more substantial tools if they were going to recover the treasure of Oak Island. They reluctantly returned to the mainland making a place to return and recover the treasure. Although nine years would pass until Daniel and his friends would return to Oak Island, they found the treasure digging site just as they've left it. Returning with a local businessman, the projects now had financial backing and support from the local labor force. The treasure evacuation had now begun, with everyone wanting a share of the gold if and when they found it. As the treasure seekers dug deeper, more oak platforms were discovered at depths of 12 meters, 15 meters, and 18 meters, with the addition of coconut fiber and putty. At 21.3 meters, they hit a platform of plain oak, followed by more oak but sealed with putty at 24.4 meters. At 27 meters, a stone not native to Nova Scotia was recovered bearing an inscription. They believed they were about to recover a hoard of pirate treasure. Sadly, the significance of the cipher on this stone was lost on Smith and the other treasure hunters, as Smith, who owned the island at the time, fitted the stone in his fireplace. The inscription was translated to read, 40 feet below, 2 million pounds are buried. Believing the pirate treasure to lie beneath the mysterious stone, it was hastily removed from the pit to uncover another layer of wood, rather than the bounty of treasure the prospectors believe would surely lie beneath. As nightfall descended, the party gave up due to poor visibility and water becoming an increasing problem. All digging was aborted until daylight, as it was thought the pirate riches could wait one more night in the ground, having been buried for a number of years there already. They must have left the island with thoughts of pirates and vast treasures filling their minds. Sunday being the next day, no work took place on the pit due to religious commitments. The group returned to Oak Island on Monday eager to recover the treasure, only to find the shaft flooded with seawater all but 10 meters from the surface. All excavation attempts to pump and bail out water failed, resulting in the pit containing water at a consistent level of 10 meters from the top. Digging became impossible in this situation, and the project was abandoned for one year. All the workers returned to their farms and looked forward to continuing the search in the springtime. It was decided that a separate treasure shaft be dug next to the original, in order to allow the flood water to pass into this new chamber. At a depth of 33 meters, the original shaft was tunneled into but to no avail. The diggers were lucky to escape with their lives, as the walls of the new shaft caved in, leaving the original shaft flooded up to a level of 10 meters below the surface again. Smith began to despair believing he'd been beaten by nature, he gave up accepting the treasure to be out of their grasp, a feeling many were to experience in the future, even with the use of metal detectors and radar. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.